Dwayne The Rock Johnson came out with a new sitcom on NBC called Young Rock, which follows the story of his life growing up. Because of COVID-19, the show was shot in Australia following COVID protocols. One of the main characters in the show is The Rock's dad, Rocky Johnson. But the actor who plays him grew up in Kansas City. I had the opportunity to talk to Joseph Lee Anderson and his experience playing Rocky Johnson. I was born into a wrestling family. Oh. Your dad was wrestling superstar Rocky Johnson. The soul man Rocky Johnson, that was him. Yeah. With the passing of The Rock's father in January 2020, there was a pressure on Joseph Lee Anderson's shoulders to play Rocky Johnson right, but everyone was putting pressure on him except The Rock. I think everyone else was putting pressure on me except for him. So that kind of made me a lot, made me feel a lot better. One of Anderson's biggest challenges was the training. He was given two months to gain over 30 pounds and weigh 250. But even though he had a personal trainer, the process was hard. When you get to that, like that level or this level, they, you know, they pay for you a trainer and um, it made it a lot easier. But at the same time, COVID was out. So it was hard to like get in the gym and do different things. Young Rock is full of intense wrestling scenes that Anderson had to master in three days. But he said that he had a helping hand from one of the best in the business. Chavo Guerrero, he used to be in the WWE, WWE and all that. He was our wrestling coach on the show. So that was pretty cool. He would teach us the match and then we would just walk through it, and learn all the moves. The journey from Kansas City to Hollywood was a lot of work for Anderson, but he said that all of the blood, sweat and tears was worth it. And uh, ever since then, just been working my way through the industry, working different markets and things like that to get to this point I'm at now. It's always nice to see a local Kansas City actor making it big. Young Rock airs on NBC Tuesdays at 7 or can be streamed on Hulu. TikTok is teaching people new dances, new foods, and recently, how easy it is to deceive others online. Lauren Hugo has the latest on deepfake technology and how it's tricking people on social media. Thanks, Stephanie. A deepfake video of Tom Cruise went viral on TikTok last week as an impersonator did magic tricks, and played golf with the actor's face on his. The TikTok was entertaining to most, but so convincing that it sparked conversation about the dangerous potential that deep fake technology has. It's the real thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's all the real thing. Fake content is not new. However, deep fake technology uses artificial intelligence to digitally manipulate and place a person's face on somebody else. The machine learning, as demonstrated by the TikTok, is only getting harder to detect. This fact has larger implications for everyone as deep fakes can be used to mislead people to believe a celebrity, politician, reporter, or even spouse did something that just never happened. I spoke with Professor Hong Tin Vu from the journalism school who recently did a study on the susceptibility of fake news. And deep fakes can be very difficult because um, when we talk about deep fakes, we talk about visual, right? We, and usually people tend to be, um, to believe in visuals more than they believe in words. Professor Vu's advice was simple. You cannot just trust anyone that you come across on online. Tom Cruise has not commented on the videos. However, he now has a verified TikTok account with 23,000 followers, as his copycat counterpart has gained over 500,000. For KUJH, I'm Lauren Hugo. Thanks, Lauren. The royal family made headlines when Meghan Markle said she felt like the little mermaid in her recent interview with Oprah Winfrey. Jordan Nicole has the latest. On Sunday, March 7th, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry sat down with Oprah Winfrey for a groundbreaking interview in California. The couple has been at the center of British press for the past few years, but the media scrutiny heightened when the Prince and Princess of Sussex left the royal family. The world got to witness a rare interview which discussed the pains and trauma that led up to their mexit. Prince Harry and Meghan decided to leave the Commonwealth because they claim they did not feel protected. Markle said that she was told her son would not receive a title or security even though he was a part of the royal family. If the title meant he was going to be safe, then of course, she said. She says she found out from her husband that members of the royal family were concerned about how dark the child's skin tone would be. Megan said that the institution played a huge role in how she was perceived in the media. She revealed to Oprah that Kate Middleton made her cry before the wedding, even though the media said the opposite. 
The pressures of adjusting to the media and not receiving professional help from the institution left Meghan feeling suicidal. Prince Harry told Oprah that they've been living off the money that his mother left him because he thinks she knew they would eventually leave. Let's take it to the streets of KU to see what students think about this heavy loaded interview. That the royal family like weren't very like um, sentimental towards her feelings towards her mental health. So I definitely think that issue during the interview was like a big part of something. I'm Jordan Nicole with KUJH News. Thanks, Jordan. That's it for entertainment. Next week, Jordan, Lauren, and I will have another roundtable, but this time for the Grammys.